。应南非总统府部长恩特沙韦尼和尼日利亚、肯尼亚、南非、土耳其政府邀请，中共中央政治局委员、中央外事工作委员会办公室主任王毅。将出席七月二十四日至二十五日在约翰内斯堡举行的第十三次金砖国家安全事务高级代表会议，并于会议前后访问尼日利亚、肯尼亚、南非和土耳其。Question from AFP, a follow-up question.、Uh, you just announced that、uh, Wang Yi will visit、uh, four countries. Uh, very soon. Can you tell us if、uh, the Foreign Minister Xin、uh, Gong will be part of the Chinese delegation? Thank you. 刚刚我已经介绍了王毅主任出访的有关情况，没有需要补充的信息。The situation to you. I have no more to add. 下一个问题。Next question. 华尔街财经，全球投资组合经理对大宗商品持悲观态度。加拿大环球邮报报道。美国银行证券 BOA Securities 最近的一项调查发现，投资者对全球经济增长和大宗商品持悲观态度。调查显示，百分之四十八的管理人认为，到二零二四年第一季度将出现全球经济衰退。因此，增长敏感型大宗商品的吸引力大幅下降。与二零二二年四月的增持相比，现在减持该行业的管理人增加了百分之十五。对中国经济复苏的悲观情绪是看跌背后的一个主要因素。只有五分之一的机构投资者认为中国经济将从这里加速。下一则新闻：克里在没有气候协议的情况下离开中国。国会山报报道，气候特使约翰·克里 （John Kerry） 结束了他的中国之行，但没有做出任何具体的减排承诺。克里表示，需要做更多的工作来完成在气候谈判中开辟新天地的任务。双方将继续加紧努力，将可再生能源纳入严重依赖煤电的中国电力行业。中国国家主席习近平重申了中国对气候变化的承诺，但强调决策应由中国自己决定。中国目前是世界上最大的温室气体排放国，而美国是第二大温室气体排放国。两国在停止合作一段时间后，于十一月恢复了气候变化谈判。下一则新闻：中国铝业巨头中铝董事长两年后辞职。路透社报道，中国铝业股份有限公司 c h a l c o 宣布，董事长刘建平因工作调整辞职。据报道。该公司的一个部门在政府主导的市场交易调查中终止了一些铝合同。中铝表示，刘的离职是正常的人事变动，与报道的合同暂停无关。刘先生与董事会没有异议，也没有与他的辞职有关的事项需要提醒股东注意。下一则新闻：埃克森美孚到二零三零年将液化天然气业务翻一番，着眼于亚洲执行官。日经亚洲报道。埃克森美孚计划到二零三零年，将其每年处理的液化天然气 （LNG） 量增加一倍，达到四千万吨以上。此举是为了应对入侵乌克兰后，亚洲和欧洲进口商对更安全能源供应的需求增加。年产量为四千万吨，占世界最大进口国日本目前需求的百分之六十。埃克森美孚将大力投资化石燃料业务，如全球液化天然气项目、美国页岩和南美海上油田。该公司还将与卡塔尔能源公司合作，在德克萨斯州和卡塔尔建立液化厂。下一则新闻：中国芯片产业组织敦促美方不要实施进一步限制。南华早报报道，中国半导体行业协会 （CSIA） 发表声明，反对美国政府对中国芯片产业的任何额外贸易限制。CSIA 警告说，美国的进一步限制将破坏半导体行业的全球化，并危及全球市场和全球经济的完整性。此前，美国半导体行业协会 c i a 也呼吁美国政府不要进一步限制向中国销售芯片，声称此类限制可能会削弱美国半导体行业的竞争力并扰乱供应链。下一则新闻：古驰首席执行官卸任，母公司追逐全球奢侈品热潮。CNN 报道，古驰首席执行官 Marco b i z a r r i 将于今年晚些时候辞职，这是母公司开云集团领导层改组的一部分，旨在占领更多的奢侈品市场。现任开云集团董事总经理让·弗朗索瓦·帕鲁斯 d o l p h r a n c o i s p o l u s 将在过渡的基础上接任。开云还拥有时装公司 y v e s a i n t l a u r e n t 和 Balenciaga。古驰占开云集团去年二百亿欧元（二百二十亿美元）收入的一半以上。受此消息影响，开云集团股价上涨百分之七点二。下一则新闻：国际货币基金组织表示，中国经济放缓将在贸易之外产生全球影响。南华早报报道，国际货币基金组织表示。中国在新冠疫情后缓慢复苏，可能会影响今年全球经常账户余额的收窄。国际货币基金组织的年度对外部门报告警告说，中国经济复苏若于预期，将直接影响其贸易伙伴，尤其是亚太地区的贸易伙伴。
。报告还强调，中国经济放缓将产生全球影响，特别是对中国占全球需求很大份额的大宗商品。尽管存在这些风险，国际货币基金组织没有调整对中国的增长预测或今年的全球增长预测。下一则新闻：高等教育泡沫拉长中国蓝领经济。外交官报道，根据外交政策的一篇专栏文章，中国不断扩大的大学教育体系导致高等教育学位持有者过剩，他们正在努力寻找合适的工作。作者认为，推动中国扩大高等教育是对一九九零年代后期出口市场疲软的回应，而不是有计划的劳动力转型举措。因此，中国大专院校的录取率从一九九八年的百分之三十三飙升至二零二一年的百分之九十二以上。然而，大学入学率的增长并没有与制造业和工业产出等部门的就业机会相匹配，这些部门继续提供该国的大部分就业机会。为了解决这种不匹配的问题，中国政府需要支持服务业的发展。服务业目前占中国年度 GDP 的百分之五十三，而全球为百分之六十四，美国为百分之七十八。然而，服务业的进步是由大学毕业生往往避免的非正规劳动密集型工作推动的。近期，平台经济、课后辅导、房地产开发等行业因监管收紧而萎缩，进一步缩小了大学毕业生的就业机会。下一则新闻：当极端天气同时袭击多个地方时，会发生什么？经济学人报道。世界各地同时发生的多起与气候有关的灾害，引发了人们对处理此类事件并从中恢复的能力的担忧。政府间气候变化专门委员会警告说，两个或多个与气候有关的事件迅速连续发生的复合事件可能产生极端影响，其影响大于其各个部分的总和。当多个地区同时受到影响，并通过农业供应链相互联系时，这尤其具有挑战性，后果可能很严重，包括粮食短缺和价格上涨。根据最近的一项研究。大多数气候模型低估了同时收成失败对全球粮食安全的风险。下一则新闻：三星和苹果在行业销售低迷的情况下，引领全球智能手机市场。南华早报报道，三星和苹果在二零二三年第二季度继续主导全球智能手机市场，尽管全球销量连续第八个季度下降。三星以百分之二十二的份额位居行业销售额榜首，这得益于其 Galaxy A 系列智能手机的强劲表现。苹果第二季度市场份额创历史新高，为百分之十七。截至六月的三个月内，印度的销售额增长了百分之五十。根据 Counterpoint Research 的数据，全球智能手机市场远远超过了快速增长阶段。在经济放缓的情况下，消费者持有设备的时间更长。华尔街财经。全世界证券交易员、投资家的专业媒体《股市简报》，内容来自全球专业媒体，由六度简报团队制作。六度简报的网址是六度 brief 点 com。华尔街论坛独家披露：秦刚被查释，习近平批示，付小田被查涉及更多高官与商人。今天的华尔街论坛，继昨天独家披露中国外交部长秦刚被调查之后，再次独家报道：五月下旬被控制调查的凤凰电视主持人付小田涉及更多高官与商人。中共总书记习近平批示调查秦刚。昨天的华尔街论坛节目披露了中国国务委员兼外长秦刚已经被调查，或涉网传凤凰电视主持人生活作风问题。明镜电视昨晚则独家报道，调查的关键动作是秦刚在驻美大使任期内的下属对他问题的举报，被送交给主管外交工作的外事办公室主任王毅，并转达给习近平。更多详细的内容与分析，请大家观看今天，也就是周三的华尔街论坛节目。中国将在香港出售十七亿美元的主权债券。南华早报，中国财政部宣布计划下个月在香港出售一百二十亿元人民币（十六点六亿美元）的政府债券。这是中国在国际上推广人民币，并在与美国的收益率差距扩大时，利用更便宜的资金的努力的一部分。上个月，财政部在香港出售了第一批离岸债券，筹集了一百二十亿元人民币。离岸市场对人民币计价金融产品的需求一直在增加，特别是在香港。因为各国从美元转向使用人民币进行贸易结算。此外，香港旨在通过推广人民币的使用来巩固其作为全球金融中心的地位。
中国希望其货币政策与全球其他主要经济体的分歧，将使其能够以较低的成本筹集资金。中国人民银行上个月将政策利率和贷款最优惠利率下调了十个基点，预计进一步下调将提振经济增长。与此同时，预计美联储今年将至少提高一次基准借贷成本。美国和中国十年期政府债券之间的收益率利差目前为 1.13 个百分点，比年初的 1.05 个百分点有所扩大。中国上半年糟糕的表现让投资者充满希望和兴趣。加拿大《环球邮报》：中国经济在疫情后复苏中面临放缓，出口下降，房地产市场低迷，削弱信心。令人失望的增长数据引发了人们的担忧，即中国可能无法实现2023年 5% 的增长目标。然而，投资者希望在即将于七月召开的中国最高官员政治局会议之后，将实施更强有力的刺激措施。大爆炸刺激的承诺吸引了一些投资者，他们认为增长和政策条件的任何改善都将引发市场情绪的好转。非必需消费品、材料和房地产等周期性行业预计将在短期内受益。高盛分析师预计，未来十二个月沪深三百指数的回报率为百分之十五。摩根大通已经下调了中国2023年的增长预测，并预计今年新建筑将进一步收缩。该银行表示，政府可能采取的促进经济增长的措施包括再次降息和全国范围内的住房政策宽松。然而，由于债务风险的增加和官员最近的讲话，预计一揽子政策的力度将受到限制和有针对性。一些分析人士对政策支援的程度持保守态度，认为财政政策可能不容易实施，尽管存在不确定性。但投资者希望最近的政策支援措施，如降息，将在未来几个月开始产生影响。北京最近关于支援私营企业的评论，以及对科技行业的监管打击的明显结束，也可能是市场的支撑因素。然而，野村证券分析师警告说，由于信心疲软和负面情绪，刺激措施可能不会扭转局面。他们认为，市场应该抑制预期，接受2024年增长放缓至 4% 以下的预期。中国企业在增长乏力的情况下，大量使用现金回购股票。南华早报：中国上市公司，尤其是在香港交易的公司，一直在加速回购自己的股票。今年大额回购的价值已达到 8.27 亿美元，高于2022年全年的 7.44 亿美元。股票回购被视为一个积极的迹象，表明公司对其商业模式充满信心，并在经济停滞的情况下寻求更好的闲置现金用途。大陆股市也出现了这一趋势。截至六月底，该股已披露八十三亿美元的回购。中国摇摇欲坠的增长前景和低迷的估值，促使现金充裕的公司探索其他能够提供可观回报的选择。一些投资者认为，北京的增长稳定措施将有助于在不久的将来扭转对股市的情绪。中国经济活动依然低迷，可能是暂时的。日本时报：中国在零 Covid 政策结束后的经济反弹弱于预期。虽然人们预计解除 COVID-19 封锁将释放被压抑的需求，但总需求并未显著增加。消费者支出增长有限，固定资产投资尚未恢复，经济活动依然低迷。然而，这种情况可能是暂时的，可归因于缺乏支援大流行后复苏的全面政策包。预计中国政府将推出一揽子政策，旨在提高工资、支援低收入家庭和重振房地产行业。中国人民银行也可能进一步降低贷款利率，以鼓励借贷。并可能努力提高地方政府的消费能力。虽然全球地缘政治变化，特别是中国与美国不断恶化的关系，将在短期内阻碍该国的经济复苏，但中国已经表现出战略思维和经济韧性。中国扩大并保障了能源和关键矿产等战略资源的获取，新能源汽车出口快速增长。中国的新能源汽车产业在汽车出口方面已超过韩国和德国，预计今年将成为全球最大的汽车出口国。政府还扩大了新能源汽车的购置税豁免，以进一步提高国内的采用率。这些发展表明，限制向中国出口微晶圆的努力将产生有限的长期影响，因为中国可能会减少对美国及其合作伙伴的技术供应链的依赖。中国分散的经济结构，技术产品在城市之间流动，由各种公司管理，允许在支援政策和补贴的部门快速增长。虽然过度资本形成可能带来挑战。早期进入的公司可能会受到影响，但强劲的经济增长仍然是可能的。总体而言，虽然中国经济反弹可能低于预期，但该国有潜力克服短期障碍并找到长期增长机会。认识谷歌失去的四十亿美元 AI 超级巨星。日本时报：谷歌未能利用其变革性的人工智慧技术，以及随后其研究团队成员的离职，使该公司难以跟上更小、更灵活的竞争对手。
。该公司的研究论文注意力是你所需要的一切。详细介绍了变形金刚的创建。该系统允许机器比以往更有效地生成类似人类的文本、图像和其他类型的数据。然而，谷歌并没有立即使用该技术，允许 OpenAI 利用它并对搜索巨头发起严重威胁。自论文发表以来，所有八位作者都离开了谷歌，创办了成功的创业公司。他们的总业务现在价值约为四十一亿美元。阻碍谷歌利用这项技术能力的一个问题是它的规模，需要多层管理层的批准，以及将想法转化为产品的高标准。此外 ，Google Brain 的研究人员缺乏明确的战略方向，导致许多人优先考虑职业发展和研究论文的知名度。英国六月通胀率大幅放缓至百分之七点九。路透社。官方数据显示，英国六月通胀率下降超过预期至百分之七点九，为一年多来的最低水准。这一数字缓解了英国央行继续大幅加息的部分压力。英国央行已经预测，六月份通胀率将降至百分之七点九。尽管有所下降，但英国的通胀率仍高于其他主要经济体。经济学家预测，英国央行将在八月三日连续第十四次加息。越南批准了三百一十七亿美元的计划。到二零三零年扩大燃料储存能力。路透社，越南已经批准了一项到二零三零年扩大其国家燃料储存能力的计划，投资额高达七百五十万亿吨，三百一十七亿美元。这项投资将使该国的原油和精炼燃料储存能力提高到净进口的七十五至八十天。目前，越南的燃料储存能力未经进口量的六十五天。此次扩张旨在防止未来由于全球供应限制或当地炼油厂故障而导致的燃料供应紧缩。该计划的大部分资金将从企业和国家预算中筹集。香港股市因中国刺激反应缓慢和利率担忧而再次下滑。南华早报，由于对中国经济前景的担忧和政策反应迟钝，香港股市连续第二天下跌。房地产开发商受到的打击最大，因为再次加息可能会破坏房屋销售。恒生指数下跌百分之一点四，科技指数下跌百分之二点三，上证综指下跌百分之零点二。然而，亚洲主要市场上涨，韩国 COSP 指数上涨百分之零点三，澳大利亚标准普尔 ASX 二百指数上涨百分之零点六，日本日经二百二十五指数上涨百分之零点七。互联互通计划的成功展现香港的独特优势。南华早报。债券通的成功让外国投资者通过香港进入中国的银行间债券市场，反映了香港自身的创新方面。自债券通推出以来，中国债券交易量增长了百分之二十五点八，外资持有的人民币债券已从债券通实施前的八千亿元人民币增加到人民币三点二万亿元人民币四千四百八十二亿美元。调集互联互通是互联互通系列的第五个专案，预计将通过提供更有效的利率风险对冲。进一步促进外资对中国债券市场的参与。经济学家表示，美联储最后一次加息是在七月会议上。路透社，路透社调查的一百零六位经济学家均预计，美联储将于七月二十六日将隔夜基准利率上调二十五个基点至百分之五点二五至百分之五点五零区间。大多数人表示，这将是当前紧缩周期的最后一次加息。尽管通胀正在下降，整体消费者物价指数。指标从五月份的百分之四点零放缓至六月份的百分之三点零，但潜在通胀仍然具有粘性。预计到明年三月底，至少降息一次的受访者比例从百分之七十八降至百分之五十五。美国六月新增业务申请创两年新高。路透社，根据美国商务部的一份报告，六月份在该国开展新业务的申请达到了两年来的最高水准。尽管利率高企且经济不确定性高。但商业申请于五月相比增长了百分之六点二，共有四十六万五千九百零六份新申请，可能创造就业机会的申请人的申请量也增加了百分之六点零，达到十四万九千五百三十六件新申请。创业活动的激增是由政府的刺激资金和低利率推动的。该报告表明，小企业越来越乐观是由于美联储暂停加息以及央行激进的加息策略即将结束的预期。谢谢大家收看股市简报。这是由六度简报团队为您制作的内容。六度简报的网址是六度 brief com， 专门面对全球精英、专业人士。
哈喽，大家好，欢迎关注华尔街电视频道。这期的热点深度，我们来关注现任中国外交部的部长秦刚梳理啊他的身世和仕途。到北京时间的2023年7月18日，中国外交部部长秦刚啊，这位被视为中国政坛的明日之星，未公开露面，哎，就是消失已经超过三周。秦刚担任中国驻美国大使不到两年，在2022年的12月晋升为外交部部长。在过去一段时间，那关于秦刚的身世、家底是被大家讨论的最多的话题之一。华尔电视的办公室就留意到，其实早在2018年的时候，就有香港媒体《香港零一》在报道，秦刚当时在二十五十二岁，成为最年轻的中国外交部副部长时，就点出秦刚出身啊，外交世家，仕途看好。文章中更是黑纸，这个白纸黑字就提到秦刚。出身外交世家，其祖父秦丽珍及姑姑啊秦小梅本身亦曾担任中国的外交官，其姑丈啊更是前外长李兆新。那在家族的同辈中，他的堂妹秦风在媒体界亦颇有名气。当时啊任职香港卫视新闻采访总监。那这几天啊，关于秦刚身世的传闻中，就有提到秦刚祖父是秦丽珍。这个说法是啊，是真是假？我们先把这个说法列出来，后面啊再给出一个明确判断。其实十多年前还有一个好玩的事，那就是在2012年3月两会的记者会上啊，秦风就揪住他的姑丈李兆新啊，当时李兆新是大会发言人，秦风抓住李兆新的西装前进追问的一个表现啊，在当时是引发了一个热议。继续回到秦刚。根据外交部网站的简历，秦刚1966年的3月出生，天津市人啊，但是啊，他是他的籍贯是在河北。大学毕业，从1992年至今，在外交部工作了26年，历任外交部新闻司副司长、司长，两度出任外交部的发言人。2014年底，秦刚由外交部新闻司司长、外交部发言人调任外交部的礼宾司司长。2017年起，秦刚任。担任啊，分管拉美地区的事务和新闻，李斌工作的部长助理兼李斌司司长，后来啊一路坐上外交部部长的助理、副部长、驻美国大使、外交部党委副书记等职务。现在呢是中国外交部的部长、国务委员。这样一位位高权重的政府人员，三周没有公开露面，造成的影响，那你只能往大里去预测。根据政府记录，现年五十七岁的秦刚之前未公开露面，最长的一次是。农农历的这个新年假期期间的八天，那人人家过春节也要放假，那非常容易理解。但现在消失三周啊，引起的猜测，那真的是啊一浪高过一浪。香港呃，英国的媒体 BBC 就提到，在中国最大的搜索引擎百度上，关键词“秦刚”的搜索指数在过去七天环比增长五十倍，搜索的日均值超过了啊这个娱乐界的明星蔡徐坤。迪丽热巴等啊，中国最知名的明星。百度限制了对其他更高级政治领导人的搜索指数显示，而一些猜测也在社交媒体广为流传啊，包括一些未经证实的涉及秦刚私生活的传闻。啊 ，BBC 中文呢，则是没有办法证实这些传闻。而关于秦刚的身世啊，在这几天有一位中国时政观察家啊，向华尔街电视频道说啊。看中国外交部的系统，在新中国成立之后，就从军队地方啊，甚至原来的国民党体系中来抽调人手，形成了中国外交部的一个基础团队。但是，哎，当时的这个中国外交部和中国政府的其他部部委一样，从条件很艰苦到逐渐改善，外交部的人员构成也随着时间变得愈发复杂。早期是一批军人成为了主要干部，周恩来是第一任的外交部部长。军队高级官员也成为了驻外大使，但当时中国的外交官长期派驻在海外，这个情况呢，就使得这些外交官自己的子女得不到很好的照顾。那个时候的子女都是不能跟随父母工作，调动四处迁徙啊，不像现在这样。由于外交部的官员长期在海外派驻，那这些外交官的子女就没人管了，胡来乱来的很多，那学习成绩差的也不少。和其他部委不一样的是，当时外交部的子女不怎么在外交部工作。一方面是工作太无聊，另外一方面是怕这些缺少家庭管束的二代们搞出各种破事。后来是江泽民时期，江泽民特别批准啊，外交官的子女可以随父母啊派驻海外。另外一位中国时政观察家则点出，秦刚是不是中国外交系统出来的红三代，还是自己后天啊努力读书出人头地。
，中国官方是没有正式的说法。而关于秦刚，最开始的说法是很荒谬的，说秦刚和博古家族有关。博古本名秦邦宪啊，确实是中共早期的领导人。说博古前妻刘群仙有一个。儿子叫做秦刚，还有人说啊，这个秦刚是前政治局委员李铁印的孩子，而博古的女儿秦新华确实嫁给了李李铁印。但这种说法荒谬的不可思议，因为博古前妻生了秦刚，而这个秦刚呢是一九二一年生的，而这个秦刚是在一九五四年就去世了。李铁印也没有儿子叫做秦刚，但就是有人扭曲成啊，这个秦刚就是现在的外交部部长秦刚，是啊李铁印的儿子。其实以上都是无稽之谈。也有人说秦刚是我们之前提到的秦丽珍的孙子，哎，这个说法还有点意思。秦丽珍是之前的外交部部长李兆新的岳父，是中共早期的外交家。秦丽珍还真当过刘少奇的秘书。秦丽珍还有一个女儿，两个儿子，女儿叫秦小梅，嫁给了李兆新。李兆新曾经与公共情妇李薇有染，被李薇在一本日记里讥讽为外交部部长。秦丽珍的两个儿子，一个叫秦小英，一个叫啊秦风秦，呃呃一另外一个啊，我们先说秦小英。那秦小英是中共党建专家。秦小英有个女儿叫做秦风，秦风在凤凰卫视当过主播，后来去了香港卫视。有说法就说是秦风介绍这个啊傅小田给了秦刚啊，这个说法没有办法证实。而秦丽珍还有一另外一个儿子叫做秦小浩。有人说秦刚是秦小浩的儿子，而这个也没有其他消息来源来进行证实。在外交部工作过的人回忆啊，秦刚的父母确实都是在外交部工作过的官员，但是秦刚的父母级别都不高。秦刚家里真正的高官不是秦刚这个这一块，而是秦刚的夫人林燕那一边。秦林燕的父亲应该是一位高级官员。有一位知情人士直接点出，林燕的父亲是前前。中国驻意大利的大使林中，中国外交部的官网显示，林中于一九八三年的三月至一九八六年的一月任中国驻意大利的大使，一九八六年四月退休啊离休。资料显示，林中曾任中华人民共和国外交部部长助理啊，这个任期是一九七八年的四月至一九八二年的十月。他是河北徐水人，一九三八年六月参加革命，曾在河北徐水。义县定兴县察哈尔青年团任抗联会的分队长、主任、组织部部长。一九四五年的十一月至一九四九年三月，河北义县的县长、定兴县的县长。一九四九年四月至一九五二年一月，青年团察哈尔省委第一副书记。一九五二年二月至一九五四年的十一月，是中共河北省宣化市的市委副书记。一九五四年的十二月至一九五八年的三月，是外交部的人事司的专员、副司长。在一九五八年四月至一九五九年二月离职学习，而在一九五九年的二月至一九六二年四月是外交部办公厅副主任，一九六二年的五月至一九六四年的二月驻匈牙利使馆参赞，于一九六四年二月至一九六九年的五月是驻保加利亚使馆参赞，在一九六九年五月至一九七一年的五月是驻阿尔巴尼亚的使馆参赞。在一九七一年六月至一九七五年的六月是驻阿尔及利亚的大使，一九七五年六月至一九七七年的二月是驻莫桑比克大使，一九七七年二月至一九七八年的四月是外交部政治部工作组组长，一九七八年四月至一九八二年的十月是外交部部长助理兼政治部主任，部啊部党组成员，一九八二年的十月至一九八五年的九月是驻意大利大使，一九八六六年的四月离休，呃。以上呢，也就是这个关于林燕的父亲林中的一些啊，这个他的一些经历。不过这里有件事比较有意思，那就是中国外交部里河北人不少，秦刚是河北人，秦丽珍是河北人，林中也是河北人。但在我们的调查挖掘过程中，发现有人提到林中的女儿林燕并不是河北人，而是福建人。那到底事实如何啊？我们还要继续追查下去。好了，以上就是今天热点深度的所有内容，更多资讯可以关注。六度简报网，网址是六度 brief dot com， 在上面各位可以订阅各类符合您喜好的简报新闻，有免费套餐，也有更加专业的付费套餐供大家选择。今天的视频就到这里，我们下个节目再见。华尔街现场，谢峰、阿斯彭论坛首秀。
s i m a Ford 的史蒂夫·克莱蒙斯 （Steve Clemens） 在阿斯彭安全论坛上采访了新任命的中国驻美大使谢峰，讨论了一系列外交热点话题。谢峰在谈话中说：“北京最大的不满之一是美国的虚伪，他一方面促进两个超级大国之间的竞争，另一方面却不让中国做生意，比如禁止华为在美国开展业务或限制向中国出口芯片元件。这就好比在泳装比赛上限制对方穿老旧的泳装，而你自己却穿着 Speedo。”谢峰打趣道。当被问及从公众视线中消失了二十多天的外交部长秦刚在突然访华期间是否会见了美国前国务卿亨利基辛格时，这位大使给出了一个隐晦的答案。谢峰说：“让我们拭目以待。”当被问及秦刚缺席仪式时，他说：“外交部已就此事向媒体做了通报。”谢峰重申：“中国希望在华盛顿和北京之间外交争执持续不断的情况下改善美中关系，并表示可以立即开始小规模的改善。”例如，增加两国之间的客运航班和外交渠道。但他警告说，美国也需要在台湾等不容谈判的问题上让步。谢峰说：“我认为最根本的事情是回到一个中国的原则上来。”他断言，他担心一些台湾领导人的亲分离主义言论对美国外交政策的影响有多大。I'm Steve Clements of Semaphore Ambassador. It's great to see you. Let me. I'm just start out a little differently here. I'm just interested. I want to pay respect to anyone near or over a hundred years old. Anyone? Anyone? Well, we had we had a.、Uh, oh, you're joking. This is a serious matter because there's some breaking news. Because Henry Kissinger、uh, was reported to have gone to China.、Uh, it's a long trip, and the, our hundred year, hundred year old、uh, diplomat Henry Kissinger is in China. Breaking news. Would love to hear how did his trip go? Has he solved things in America? I mean, is there any breaking news that you can share with us about solving any of the problems that China and the United States have? Well. Uh, I think it's a good occasion to uh, uh, pay our respect to Dr. Kissinger again. Uh, to, uh, this year he is、uh, 100 years old, and he has not only been a.、Uh, I think he first of all he is a patriotic American citizen. He cares for American interests, but I think it's also wise for him to realize that a sound and stable Sino-U.S. relations. Is in the interest not only of China but also United States. So that is why the first American friend I paid my、uh, courtesy to is Dr. Kissinger.、Oh. I uh, visited his uh, home in uh, uh, in、uh, Hartford, and、uh, afterwards I also、uh, hosted a uh, dinner uh, in honor of his uh, uh, centenary you know, birthday. So now he is in Beijing, and he is、uh, he will be meeting with the、uh, Chinese leaders, and I think、uh, the message from this visit is that、uh, a Sino-U.S. relations is、uh, so important that we simply cannot let it fail, and that is the、uh, responsibility of our two countries to work together to、uh, bring this relationship. Back to the right track. Well, we know he met、uh, Wang Yi. We know、mm-hmm. he met the defense minister, who、mm-hmm. we have not had a lot of meetings with the defense. But any chance he met Chin Gong,、mm-hmm. the foreign minister? Well, let's wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> any more? No. Yes, there will be more.、Uh, I think there will be other Chinese uh, leaders uh, who will be meeting with Dr. Kissinger. Well, we we will do this. We are interested in in uh, uh, the former foreign minister. Well, the, the current, I shouldn't say former, the current foreign minister, the previous ambassador.、Mm-hmm. Uh, he spoke on this stage last year. Ed Luce、uh, interviewed him and just、mm-hmm. uh, would love to to hear how he is. And I, so I I thought maybe he was doing secret diplomacy and Henry Kissinger was over、uh, engaged with Chin Gong, but、mm-hmm. that hasn't come out yet. So if there is, if that has happened, I hope you'll give me the scoop.、Mm-hmm. Well, the、uh, foreign minister spokesman have already、uh, you know breathed、mm-hmm. the、uh, media. On this,、mm. so I thank you for your care.、Mm. Okay, great.、Right. <laughs> so let me ask you, Ambassador, you're here,、um, and and I'm interested in why, given、uh-huh. I mean, the U.S.-China relations, as you know,、uh, is is in a bit of trouble.、Uh, it's it's a portfolio that's going to require a lot of work. I'm not sure why you wanted to come here. What is your agenda, as you see it, as you diagnose U.S.-China relations? What's good? What's not good from your perspective? And what are you going to try and fix? Well, this is,、uh, frankly speaking, a difficult time for China-U.S. relations. 
But as a diplomat, I have to uh, you know, follow the uh, instruction of my leaders, as well as my government, to do the uh, job that mm. is needed to be done. So I came here. On the one hand, you know, as the uh, Chinese uh, representative, I'm here to uh, safeguard China's interests. But on the other hand, as the, uh, as the uh, representative of the Chinese people, I'm mm. coming here also to enhance communication and cooperation mm. between China and the United States. And this is also my important mission. Uh, China U.S. relations is facing serious difficulties and challenges. Uh, recently, since my arrival, I have noticed there have been uh, reflections on the U.S. side on its China policy. Mm. Uh, in the previous uh, weeks, there have been a series of uh, high-level exchanges between China and the United States. And they proved to be in-depth, candid, and constructive. Uh, I think the most important thing out of these uh, visits is that both sides agreed uh, we should implement the uh, important common understanding reached between the two presidents in Bali. I think that this is a good sign. Mm. This provides a rare opportunity, but the uh, challenges are still abound and the foundations are still fragile. So, so we need to... Uh, keep up and also to uh, sustain this good momentum. So you had Secretary of State Blinken, who will mm -hmm. be uh, here this week. You had uh, Secretary of Treasury Yellen, who will mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had John Kerry uh, mm -hmm. over. Uh, now we, we can't count him as an official, but of course, Henry Kissinger. So there's a stream of people going over. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Well, right now, uh, Kerry, the uh, Presidential Special Envoy is in Beijing. Mm. And uh, Secretary Raimondo has also expressed a wish to go to China. So we welcome more American uh, officials, as well as people from the business, from the uh, you know, uh, uh, students, uh, uh, scholars, right. uh, even tourists we welcome. We embrace you to visit China. So do you look at Secretary Raimondo, we were just talking to her earlier, not talking to her, but about her earlier, uh -huh. On a, in a session about chips with the CEO of Intel and the previous Secretary of Com Commerce, uh, Penny Pritzker. And, and we were talking about a kind of technology war with China and whether we're in that or not. Both of them said no, but they said the challenge is very severe. Do you look at Gina Raimondo as an economic official or do you look at her as a national security military official? Well, that question has to be determined by the U.S. side, not by me, you know. Uh -huh. uh, but frankly speaking, China <laughs> is opposed to uh, any kind of uh, trade war, you know, uh, technological war, under the pretext of uh, competition. China does not shy away from competition, mm. but the uh, definition of competition by the U.S. side, I think, is not fair. But first of all, the uh, United States is trying to win uh, by keeping China out. Mm. For instance, Huawei was banned even though this company has come up with a uh, agreement to uh, have no security, to have no backdoor. So how can you imagine a competition without one side, mm. even on the ground? And secondly, I think uh, the uh, United States is uh, rallying allies to encircle China. Mm. This is not in conformity with the one-on-one uh, -on -one so game you, rule. So you feel encircled? Uh, of course, this is the effect. This mm. is the fact. And thirdly, I think the uh, uh, United States is uh, uh, restricting or prohibiting China uh, in, in importing equipments to build uh, chips, you know, which are smaller than 14 uh, nanome uh, nanometers. Mm. Uh, I think this is uh, like uh, you know, restricting the other side to wear outdated swimwear in a <laughs> swimming contest while you yourself is wearing a speedo, you know, fast skin. So this is not fair. <laughs> I, I, am, I am, just for the record, very comfortable with outdated uh -huh. swimwear uh, <laughs> uh, in this. But, <laughs> but it is interesting. Metaphor. But I, I mean, China, however, in response to some of these, you've banned Micron Technologies mm -hmm. from your national security architecture. Um, you've also restricted export of two metals. Are we at the beginning of an escalatory tit-for-tat 
from your perspective that you're now sending a signal that you're not going to take it anymore and you're going to go out and begin restricting technologies and materials that the United States needs. Mm -hmm. But you see, up to now, uh, 1,300 more Chinese entities or personnel have been on the U.S. sanctions list. And these people were forced out of uh, job and their families suffered greatly. Mm. Uh, and we have been, uh, it has been reported that the U.S. side is also considering, you know, uh, having a uh, outbound investment review mechanism, as well as a further, you know, prohibition on the uh, export of uh, uh, AI chips to China. So these, you know, the Chinese people cannot sit, uh, cannot, you know, uh, remain mm -hmm. silent. And Chinese government cannot simply sit idly by. Uh, chi in Chinese uh, saying, there, uh, there's a Chinese saying that, uh, uh, saying that uh, we will not you know, make provocations, but we will not flinch from provocations. Uh, so China definitely you know, will make our response, mm. but definitely it's not our hope to have a tit for tat. We don't want, you know, a uh, trade war, technological war. Mm. We, uh, we want to say goodbye to uh, the iron curtain as well as the uh, silicon iron curtain. Mm -hmm. Do you think Americans you're meeting with are getting that message? You were at the Pentagon recently. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you uh, have met Representative Mike Gallagher, of the mm -hmm. chair of the uh, Select Committee on China. But are you sensing that that message that you're sharing with us, do they believe you? Well, uh, I have not met with the, the representative yet, mm. but I'm trying my best to engage with the uh, American public. Mm. And the reason why I come here to attend this uh, uh, forum I think they're is simply watching. to speak out. You know? I think they're watching, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I think the committee is definitely watching. So, so. Thank you. You want to say hello Th to Mike thank Gallagher? You. I would like to express yeah. my thanks again to the uh, forum for in inviting me. Right. And thank you but for talking to me. But in this portfolio of your job and whatever, you know, I, I reached out and I, mm. I basically talked to a couple of folks I really respect in the broad foreign policy establishment, but I also got a couple of quotes. I just want to read mm. them real quickly because I think you have a bitch of a job uh, coming up. <laughs> and, and, and so one of these very senior U.S. officials, I don't want to uh, name, but in the, in the Biden White House, say they, they, they basically believe, listen, Steve, don't have any illusions. China has a long-term plan to displace America as the global hegemonic power and replace that displacement with its own role in influence. That's one. If you listen to Mike Gallagher, he says the greatest threat to the United States is the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP continues to commit genocide, obscure the origins of the coronavirus pandemic, steal hundreds of billions of dollars worth of American intellectual property and threaten Taiwan, et cetera. Um, Kevin McCarthy said to win the new Cold War, he calls it a new Cold War, we must respond to Chinese aggression with tough policies to strengthen our economy, rebuild our supply chains, speak out for human rights, stand against military aggression, and end the theft of America's uh, personal information. These are very tough words. And then a different official said, uh, Xi Feng is the right person at the right time to be China's ambassador in Washington. I think he will be able to communicate in hopefully an effective manner, both in the nation's capital and more broadly, while of course representing President Xi in China. We certainly need that, as you so well understand. I'll just say that is a very, very important too. There is not a consensus per se around, there's a lot of toxicity. So you, you're, you're gonna have to be dealing with this. So when you hear those kinds of comments from senior government officials, what is your path for success? Well, to follow the uh, question you raised just now, you know, whether my voice has been heard by the uh, general public. Uh, you see, since my arrival, I have a uh, perception that uh, a little bit surprising to me of this uh, so-called political correctness hmm. in the uh, US society. Uh, I have been talking to as many American friends as possible. Um, I think there are still a large number of uh, supporters for this relationship, but they seem to be under pressure and they seem to be reticent under the uh, uh, recent you know, uh, uh, chilling effect. Mm. And they uh, tend to, uh, uh, to restrain from uh, making their views you know, uh, out uh, under the so-called you know, anti-China chorus. Mm. Uh, 
a, an American netizen you know, commented on my Twitter saying that uh, I hope you find some allies. Uh, there are some uh, hide, hiding in the darkness, afraid of being uh, crushed. <laughs> so one of my job here, mm. I think, is to uh, seek them out. I am one, but we are many. So I hope that all of you will join hands with me to seek them out and to uh, contribute together to this relationship. Now, coming back to your previous uh, question, uh, Chinese people, I think, are the most friendly people in the world. And uh, aggressiveness or assertiveness is not our tradition. And uh, invasion or the pursuit of hegemony mm. definitely is not our DNA. Uh, when President Xi Jinping met with uh, Secretary Clint, uh, uh, Blinken about two weeks ago, uh, our president said emphatically that China, China and you, uh, the world is big enough to let China and the United States develop respectively mm. and also to prosper together. China do not challenge the United States or try to displace the United States. Uh, instead of out-competing others, China now is now focusing on outdoing ourselves. We have a long way to go, and uh, we want to build the uh, prosperity pie even bigger, and also divide them uh, fairly. Right. So it's an uphill you know, battle for us. So there's no one is m uh, more eager than China right. to see a stable, healthy relationship between China and the United States. So how do you get there? So Wang Yi uh, mm. is in the news a lot because he's doing two jobs. Mm. Um, you're the, the head of the CCP's Foreign uh, Committee and then Foreign Affairs Committee and also really acting in the role of Foreign Minister for the, for the moment. And he said that, that, that no one can transform China. Mm -hmm. And he says, more importantly, absolutely no one can contain China, that both of those would be there. But I think a lot of the concern about so-called transforming China is, is the difference between China and the U.S. on dealing with human rights. Or how, you, how uh, Brad Smith of Microsoft is here, wrote a book on tools and weapons about how China deploys facial recognition software and how it, I'm interested in how and whether on these big issues that a lot of people in the world care about, AI, the coming use of quantum technology, but also human rights, how we can solve those tensions in a way that's not considered transforming, even though the United States wants to see transformation. Well, China has been uh, engaging with the United States and other countries you know, in uh, uh, dialogues mm. on uh, AI, on uh, human rights, on a very broad range of issues. Mm. But of course, China and the United States are two uh, different uh, nations mm. with uh, very different cultural background and historical background. So we cannot see eye to eye mm. you know, on everything, just like each individual cannot see you know, eye to eye mm. on every issue. Mm -hmm. But our position is that we should see common grounds while sharing differences. And uh, mutual respect is very important. So China is, uh, take the example of uh, human rights. Mm. China now is uh, uh, promoting the so-called whole process, you know, people's democracy. Mm. Uh, that is, uh, we, you, saw, you see, uh, rose is beautiful, not because of the name, mm. because of the smell, you know. <laughs> and the democracy should not be as a slogan. Uh, it should deliver. Uh, mm. We think that uh, if a democracy uh, process that have the uh, widest participation. Mm. Uh, it can uh, deliver outcomes, that is to improve people's lives. And if finally it can get the approval of the uh, people, then this is good democracy. Mm. You know, from the uh, previous uh, dozens of years, Edelman and uh, Harvard University conducted mm. you know, uh, opinion poll in China. And the approval rate for the Chinese government has always been over 90%. Mm. 
So this, I think this is very you, convincing. You just made Richard Edelman's day. Uh, <laughs> this. Um, let, me, let me read something here. It's in today's Financial Times uh, by Edward Luce, who's in the hall. And, and he wrote, the, the, the challenge for the West is in forging a common front on China without it spilling over into direct confrontation. Unlike the war in Ukraine, which must eventually reach some kind of messy conclusion, the rivalry between the US and China is a project without end. For the purposes of strategic planners, it offers no natural conclusion. This is where history ceases to offer much guidance. Short of Armageddon, there's no scenario in which either the US or China will emerge as the world's sole hegemon. It's a really thoughtful um, paragraph in, in Ed's piece, but it made me think about something you and I have talked about before. And, and uh, Anya Manuel, the director of, of the Aspen Security Forum mentioned yesterday, is there any room for a cooperation agenda? Is there any area that you can encircle where, the, where the, the circles come over and you can more robustly grab a cooperation agenda and what would be in it? Well, for uh, China-US relations looking forward, I think uh, three priorities uh, are essential. One is to, uh, to uh, shorten the uh, negative list. Shorten the what? Shorten the negative list, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, clear the obstacles and manage the differences. Mm. For example, the uh, Taiwan question, which is so important, so sensitive, we should, you know, uh, take care of it in accordance with the uh, three joint communique case. Uh, when do you United think States you're going should to take the when, uh, when China's you... entities and the personnel, you know, out of the uh, sanction list? Right. And the President uh, Biden have been uh, saying that uh, United States do not seek uh, uh, Taiwan independence. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not want to decouple with China. It does not want to store China's economic development, uh, and it does not seek to uh, change China's uh, system. We hope that the United States do you will believe? Do you, do, you, well, do you believe the president? They will translate these statements into concrete actions. Mm -hmm. This is number one. The second category, I think, we also have to expand the uh, positive agenda. Uh, I think there are a, great, a lot of areas, you know, that we can uh, cooperate, including. You know the AI, uh, the uh, AI, you know quantum, uh, whatever you know. But I know now is a difficult time. So why don't we start with some uh, concrete, small steps? For example, you know to increase uh, passenger flights, to uh, adjust the uh, China travel uh, advisory, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to resume uh, to to renew the uh, cooperation agreement on science and technology. Mm to uh, restart the, uh, Mecca, uh, the Mecca program, which will facilitate more Congress, uh, congressmen, senators, as well as their staff members to visit China. Uh, why don't we hold the uh, tourism you know, leadership forum so as to attract uh, tourists you know, from both countries to visit each other? Uh, and the last but not least, I think uh, we should do something to facilitate the visa application as well as the uh, uh, border entry for uh, businessmen, for scholars, for students, and for tourists. So these are easy things I think uh, we can do right away. You know, as I remember in the, uh, before 2017, mm. China and the United States used to have more than 100, almost 200 uh, dialogue mechanisms, but they have been stored by the US side since 2018. Mm. I think the two sides have waited too long. Why don't we st start renewing them if not all, then starting from 50 or 30, I think that is possible. And the last one is the one I said just now, to seek out supporters mm. to, in, uh, to create an environment for a healthy development of our bilateral relations. On the climate front, what do you think John Kerry will achieve in China? And do you have any criticisms for the United States' role on mm -hmm. climate today? Mm -hmm. Climate change is uh, another area. China and the United States have great potential to work together. If you look back, the you, Paris, do, but do you Paris think, Agreement. Do you, do you think you were, that China is doing so much? I mean, I'm actually pretty well read in it due to you know, China's growth and on a lot of fronts, carbon, there's no doubt in those areas, but also in, in uh, uh, dealing with uh, climate remediation or carbon remediation in a lot of areas. Do you think the United States is living up to its goals on, on climate change today? Well, first of all, great potential for China and the United States to uh, work together in mm. this uh, area. 
Secondly, I think uh, we should still you know, uh, uh, stick to the principle of uh, uh, common you know, responsibility, common but differentiated mm. uh, responsibility. And thir thirdly, you should implement what you have uh, you know, committed mm. uh, up to now. For example, the uh, developed countries have committed themselves to providing assistance to developed countries. Mm. So we are waiting that to be, uh, to, be, to, be, to be done with real actions. Mm -hmm. yeah, coming, uh, coming back to the question you just yeah. raised now, uh, China definitely seek, uh, do not seek hegemony. Mm. And we don't want to have conflict with the United States. As I said, we do not want to challenge the United States or uh, displace the United States. We want to grow mm. together with the United States. So I think the uh, Thucydides you know, trap is not an inevitable, it's not inevitable. Mm. Uh -huh. And uh, that is why I think uh, we should say goodbye because the, the world has changed. Now we have to look beyond. Uh, we should say goodbye right. to the uh, Cold War mentality. We right. should uh, say goodbye to the uh, block confrontation. Uh, we should say uh, goodbye to the zero sum game. And we should bring about, uh, we should, you know, avoid a major country conflict. I once remembered, mm. you know, a, uh, an American friend asked me, what kind of flower will grow out of China? Mm. And my answer is, it will be a flower of peace, a flower of cooperation, a flower of uh, common, you know, uh, development. Right. It will be a Chinese peony. Right. As, Chinese peony. As, you know, uh, as beautiful. Mm as sweet as American roses. <laughs> I think that's a tweetable moment. Um, we only have three minutes. I want to do lightning round with you. In talking about what China wants to become and how it's evolving, mm -hmm. one of the features that we've all been surprised, we woke up one day and said, saw that China had negotiated normalization between the Saudis and Iranians. What's next? What, what, I mean, the, the fact that you're doing it, if you can give me a short answer here, but it's a different behavior. We didn't see China doing that kind of role. Should we expect more? Is Israel-Palestine next? <laughs> well, China, the, the purpose of China uh, facilitating for the uh, reestablishment re of diplomatic relations mm. between the two countries is simply to uh, encourage more countries in the region to embrace peace, to shake hands, so I'm very glad to uh, see that Palestine is following. <laughs> yeah. We hope that uh, China will not only do this in the Middle East, but also in other areas. We think that as China develops into a uh, uh, economically more, vi uh, more vibrant you know, uh, country, then China should contribute more to world peace and development. You have a relationship without end with Russia. God, I can't believe we have two and a half minutes. Um, what are the Vladimir Putin's redeeming qualities as you see them? Well, as diplomats, you know, uh, we uh, conduct our foreign relations, you know, on our respective national interests. I have not met with uh, President Putin personally. Mm. <laughs> I still remember President, you know, uh, so you Bush. Might, you might I, still I still not like I remember him. when I was yeah. working here for the first time. Right. President uh, President Bush Jr. Right. said that he uh, looked into the eyes of Mr. Putin. Saw his soul. He saw yeah. him. That saw his soul. He is reliable, you know. <laughs> yeah. But you know, <laughs> this doesn't. <laughs> China, Russia, have as two big, you know, neighbors. We have more than. Four thousands of thousands uh, kilometers of uh, border, so it's only natural for us right. to uh, maintain you, you good care, neighborly relations. China cares about its borders, and mm -hmm. China cares about sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Do you believe Ukraine has a legitimate case fighting back against Russia because its sovereign lines, as recognized by them? I mean, you had an embassy mm -hmm. there. I mean, do you recognize that? And what can China do to help solve this horrible mess? Mm -hmm. Well, to first to finish the uh, yeah. previous okay. question, you know, uh, we, it's only natural for China and uh, Russia to maintain uh, normal, uh, friendly, neighborly uh, right. relations, and uh, also to engage with each other in legitimate, legitimate you know, trade. Hmm. Uh, but uh, China, since the uh, breakout of the, uh, you know, the uh, Ukrainian crisis, we have been uh, openly and repeatedly uh, uh, our position. We 
uh, want to uh, we safe we stand for the safeguarding of uh, national uh, for for sovereignty and territorial integrity. This is number one. And secondly, we are also asking for you know the uh, respect to the legitimate and reasonable you know uh, security concern. Lastly, uh, I want to come back to Taiwan. I'm interested in what your red lines are. There's now a discussion of another pass-through situation. What we see a quote out there that appeared in the Financial Times today, in fact, about the a, a potential uh, front runner in Taiwan's race saying their job will be done when they're able to, be, to, to go by invitation into the White House. Mm -hmm. Is that a red line? Is that, is that the same for you? as Taiwan declaring independence? Because I asked this, as yesterday there was a very, very good interview with Admiral uh, John Aquilino with my, my colleague and, well, you know, uh, uh, journalistic colleague Courtney Kuby about Taiwan, and he said, look, U.S. policy has not changed. The Taiwan Relations Act, the six uh, reassurances are there, the three uh, uh, communiques, and so there's been no change. But my question to you is, what are the red lines that would make you not believe President Biden and the administration that policy had not changed. Would it be an invitation to the White House? Well, talking about Taiwan, I think the first and foremost thing that we should bear in mind is that Taiwan is China's Taiwan. It's part of China. It's an alienated part of China. So uh, China, I think no one is more eager or sincere than China to see a peaceful solution to see the peace and stability along the Taiwan Straits to continue, and also to see a peaceful uh, re reunification of mm -hmm. China. Now, the uh, two imposing threats to them, on the one hand, is the, uh, the uh, Taiwan separatist mm -hmm. advancing their separatist you know, agenda, seeking US support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They uh, have uh, deviated from their previous position of one China they even, you know, uh, have given up the uh, cross race uh, consensus, uh, Singapore consensus. And they right. have also, I mean, uh, they even did not admit they are Chinese. You know? <laughs> right. So this is a very dangerous, you know, uh, path they are taking. Secondly, is the United States, you know, uh, playing the Taiwan card to contain China. So these together will embolden the uh, separatists to uh, take adventurous mm you know, moves. So that is something that we should be guard against. So now I think the uh, most fundamental thing is to uh, return to the one China uh, principle. And the most important thing is that the three joint communiques, be communiques between our two countries should be implemented. Mm. And thirdly, I think uh, the uh, uh, provocative, adventurous moves by the uh, Taiwan separatists should right. be uh, contained. And now the priority for us mm. is to stop Lai Qingde from visiting the United States, which is like a gray rhino charging at us. Huh. <laughs> Thank you. Final, 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 final. 50 mm. years until last year, we had pandas in the United States. There are no pandas in the United States. Is that going to be your big uh, &E? I will do my utmost to do that. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, uh, here, in uh, Aspen, there will also be, <laughs> will also okay. be one. <laughs> Ambassador Jifeng, I would say this genuinely, that, that there, people knew you were coming here. Uh, I have been talked to by people in this room from all over, everyone do. Well, first I want to say, first of all, thank you for taking uh, some tough questions. Thank you as well uh, for your candor. And I think there's no one here that wants to see things go badly, but it's going to require both sides to be introspective and thoughtful. I will tell you that the last line of Ed's uh, uh, really excellent article um, is that it is a zero-sum game. So we have to you know, prove to him that it's somehow wrong, because right now it has that feel. But I want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Let us uh, work together to reverse the zero-sum game and to make it into a win-win game. <laughs> thank you.